Hi everyone. Hey. Welcome to our first episode of What the F are those guys doing? <laughs> oh, we we thought it would be amusing to have like a um like a what what, what are those guys doing? Um we, don't know, just trying to we, be amusing. We're sort of This is this will be the more casual sort of streams where we don't really know what we're doing there's no plan well, we're just sort of winging it and hoping something useful comes out of it well there, there is a there is enough of a plan to be interesting but it's not like last week's one i had re- basically written a, a blog post this week yeah. it's, it's dot points but it's, it's not very um, scripted in any way this is this is more of your uh like lazy boy armchair stream um yeah. it's trying as as we're trying to shake things up, so we used to do a lot of CTF. CTFs are relatively easy to stream, as long as everything works right. You kind of just you do it. You write down all the steps you did, and then you do them back in the stream and talk stuff through. But yeah. learning to do non CTF things, and you kind of have to. Oh, I got to think about this myself. Yeah, um, <laughs> and so I guess that's sort of where this one comes along. So uh, we well. I received an interesting email a while ago with a attachment which looks pretty dodgy. We so, also then received the exact same attachment, the email and attachment at work. Yes, we um, got this so, sent to some work emails as well. So we thought, yeah. you know what, why not do a stream on setting up a secure, secure in quotes, uh, sandbox VM where we're going to sort of download and play around and try and debug and figure out what this um, malware or whatever it is was trying to do. Hopefully learn something. Um, Hopefully, I don't know. (laughs) Well, as you you can see, so getting started, so this is what the email looks like. Yeah. So it had a title like INV. In this case, it's what, 134447. Yeah, like trying to... convince us that it's an invoice that we need to download and pay yeah. from someone in this case called well the from you can change yeah. when you're sending an email address yeah exactly. the actual email address is that 128826 at com. however some of the ones i've seen have looked like they've come from genuinely like compromised email accounts exactly so the one yeah. i had was for a legit uh company that exists um, that they didn't look like they were in the business of just sending spam. They were in the agriculture industry, and the, even the like name and the email looked fairly corporate, name format legit. And then you also get this attachment. There's a lot of numbers. That's a zip file. So one of the one of the things uh, is if you get an email like this with the zip file and you use Outlook, like if unless you've changed the settings in Outlook, and this is something I realised it will try and preview the file, yes, uh, yeah. which can be a risk. So one of the things, first things, is when you're playing around with trying to get attachments out of emails so that you can get them in a sandbox, is doing it the right way uh, with without accidentally triggering something. In this case, it's a VB script inside it, and the VB script doesn't actually run when you preview it. It just shows up. But in theory... Uh, there could be scenarios where things get previewed and actually run. It's one of the big problems with like um, broke, like bad things in Word documents and Excel's and PDFs and stuff. Is if you preview them or if the previews are automatic, at that point you're owned. It's like exactly game over. Yep. <laughs> yes. so, so so that's why we're we're doing this from a web based mail client, and also it's to help me download it into the the VM once we've got that set up yeah. and ready to go. And so. the big the big white block is just to cover up some um, stuff that, you know, we don't necessarily need to make public on the stream, such as, like, <laughs> actual email addresses and stuff. Yeah. This one's just the Proton Mail one. He's fine with that, but the from. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, that's, so that's why that's there. So this is the, this is the file that we're going to be analysing and debugging, and then um, we'll jump over and sort of show how we set up our, our sandbox and reversing VM ready ready to take this file and not compromise our own machine if something goes wrong. <laughs> yeah. Uh, although, just, just to say, in this particular case, with this particular bit of um, 
the, what you get isn't malware in the attachment. It's something that will yeah. execute and then do some nasty... Maybe it does execute on preview because it's just a VB file. Anyway. Um, it's possible. I mean, it's a VB file, so it could be trying yeah. to target something so, in, um, so, in Office. So to be clear, we're both kind of new to reversing stuff. Yes. So... Uh, this is us like learning kind of ourselves. Yeah, um, this is us learning and making it up as we go. Hence, sort of, I guess, yeah, yeah. The the we, naming of the series, because yeah, we we're not experts in this. We're just sort of learning yeah, as we, we go. Know. We'll explain things to each other as we go, and hopefully, you guys learn something. Hopefully, we learn something. <laughs> we know enough. We know enough to take some sensible precautions. So exactly. doing things in a VM on a separate laptop. So Jake's doing this on a laptop of his that isn't his primary laptop full of all his personally identifiable information. Correct. Uh, so if you ever want to do things like this, kind of uh, setting up a bit of a blast radius, as I like to call it. So the idea yep. is if it all goes sideways, how bad's it going to be? If exactly. it's going to download CryptoLocker, you know, it's only going to encrypt a file system you don't care about. If it's something that could potentially try and break out of a hypervisor, then you might want to take care of that as well, although that stuff's not always super common. But, eh, you know, yeah, you just I mean, wanna... a, a VB script attachment, we're not expecting anything too, I guess, groundbreaking in terms of the, the exploit quality and, yeah, trying to do full sandbox escapes or, like attacks no. against the vm and stuff like that um and as it turned out when we took our first pass of looking at this it doesn't even run on windows 10 it can't yeah. fully execute so uh, some uh, of that yeah we'll, we'll run through the vm setup i guess now and then explain why we made the choices we did so um oh that's what i was going to do actually i haven't got a thing for it set up but basically so windows or oh, microsoft are nice enough to provide developers um pre-configured virtual machines for all of the supported operating systems as a way of testing all the different versions of Internet Explorer. So what I've done here is gone and downloaded the... Initially, I downloaded the Windows 10 one, like we were saying, and um, running through and debugging it for work, um, it got to a point where it was just throwing an exception and it wouldn't get any further as... A script and I think it was because there was something in the Windows 10 operating system that it was looking for that didn't exist or was configured differently or something like that so I thought or, for the live stream we'll give or it a, a vulnerability that wasn't an issue anymore so exactly it could be that yeah. as well so we figured this time we'll try running it against a Windows 7 VM and see if we get different results hopefully we do if not we'll probably i don't know try and make our windows 7 os a bit more vulnerable well, either to way see if we can, can get past it <laughs> come along you can come along on the journey with this as yeah. we figure a bit out i mean there's some some things to learn and see how we go so uh, let's get started what does a vm look like so uh does this have oh yeah it's got devices and everything okay cool so basically i downloaded the vm what you have to do is, um, it doesn't show everything, does it? It's probably the wrong screen. Uh, anyway, so it's a Windows 7 VM, uh, Service Pack 1. I downloaded the oldest one, so the Windows 7, I think, IE8 uh, VM, but there's a bunch. There's a Windows 7, IE8, 9, possibly 10. I can't remember. Um, but yeah, so this is basically the default IE Windows 7 VM. Uh, I did have to extend the hard disk. So by default, it gives you a 40 gig drive. Um, we're installing Visual Studio on, Studio on here. So we need a bit more hard drive space. Uh, so it's just part of VMware probably. Um, we'll, put some, we'll put some links in the description when the stream's over for where you find the VMs you know and I can also it. how you expand storage in... Um, are you using VirtualBox here? VMware. Or VMware? Yeah. VMware, yeah. So, and how you expand disk storage in VMware, uh, which normally involves a bit of in VMware, you expand the disk allocation, and then in the OS you have to 
um, oh, on Linux, you just use like um, the partitioning tools to expand the amount of disk space you actually use. On Windows, it's like the disk format a tool or whatever yeah, it is. Yeah, that, that's exactly... I'll, I'll run through quickly what I did and then you guys can do it in your own time just because we'll be here all night if I actually did it from scratch. So, um, yeah, you just Google IEVMs and you get this Microsoft.com. It's like an official Microsoft thing. It's nothing dodgy or illegal or anything like that. And you can just pick whichever VM you want, um, whether you want to test on Windows 7, 8 or 10. I've picked Windows... 7 ie 8 and then the platform so if you're running yeah virtual box vmware parallels on a mac um any of that sort of thing download it just just to be clear as well it's uh for for testing and for testing and non-commercial so use this so. kind of is so for yeah for um if you run a company yes. or uh even for personal use you technically have to you you really you have to buy it and these after three months stop working so you have to kind of yeah don't do it for actually using as your your desktop or to try and get licenses or yeah do any sort of commercial application development or anything like that it's purely testing which is technically what we're doing so i'm gonna say it's okay yeah (laughs) yeah yeah it gives you the passwords no, and I've stuff them if you need like them. And yeah, the download I think is about 11 or 12 gig roughly. So uh, yeah, you can do that, set it all up, give yourself a bigger hard drive. And then on Windows 7 at least, you can just, the way that I do it is right click manage on computer. Wait for it. And then under this disk management stuff, you should get, That's right, yeah. it'll, it'll be a 40 gig disk with a bunch of empty space and you can just right click and click extend and it'll, you run through the wizard and it'll fill up the rest of the, the empty space and add it to the disk. We'll throw, again, we'll throw some, a uh, couple of links in the description once this is done. So yeah, we'll, uh, we'll if you're, probably if you're watching this later, blog post as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, so from there, there's basically three tools we're going to at least start off with. First of all, Notepad++. You can download that for free from their site. Wireshark, same deal. Download and install that. Visual Studio is the interesting one uh, as far as, I guess, the, the setup for this, this reversing that we're going to do anyway. So we're using Visual Studio because we know that it's a VBS script and we want to be able to debug it and watch what the script is doing as it is executing. That's why I picked Visual Studio. Um, This is the community edition, not Visual Studio Code or Pro or Enterprise or anything like that. So you can use all three tools. Um, The- One of the the things to note with, uh, in our case, because this VB script is the probably the first stage in like kind of a uh, trying to gain presence on someone's computer so it just looks for some vulnerabilities to what well, we think it looks for some vulnerabilities to exploit and it also downloads some binaries yeah, from somewhere so on the internet so uh, in, in terms of stuff that we've used before such as like meterpreter and things like that this is essentially the staging payload so yeah it sort of executes phones home downloads the actual exploit and then tries to do a bunch of other things. Um, yeah. Which hopefully we will get to see as this series progresses. It probably won't be all tonight. Uh, we'll just have to see how timing goes, but we'll definitely be continuing to do this sort of stuff if it's yeah. one of the other things. One of the other things to note is generally like scripts that are the first stage you can... And did, you have to debug because the scripts are fairly... Um, obfuscated like uh, we'll we'll show you what it looks like in a bit but um uh if you're trying to reverse other stuff hooking up a debugger to it uh often like especially when you get to the stage where you've downloaded a binary has some stuff in there to try and figure out if you're running in a vm or you're trying to debug it yeah that's where more of the smarts come in yeah so basically uh when you're going through and installing visual studio because we know it's a vb script the only thing that we need is 
the Office SharePoint development stuff because that comes with all of the VB script development tools. Don't get that confused with the Windows desktop uh, VB stuff because that's, I think, the like desktop Visual Basic GUID style development stuff. Um, Visual Basic Forms or Windows Forms or whatever they're called. Um, what we've actually got is a VBS, like a, an Office VB script. So you should only need that um, that module when you're installing. Yeah. Also, is Queensland an hour ahead of uh, everywhere else in Australia? We are an hour behind. Um, oh, so it's... Well, it's quarter past eight here for me. What's the time for you? Well, see, I don't know. So... <laughs> Your VM says 9.13, that's all. I'll put it this way. My phone says 7.16. My computer desktop says uh, 8.16. And then the VM says 9.13. Uh, so, yeah, I had to I had to make my force my desktop to update. I turned off the time zone. I'm pretty uh, sure we're an hour behind. Content. So yeah. it's, yeah, 7.16 for me anyway. Okay, cool. Uh, so, it's, yeah. It's the joy of different, different states, I suppose. Anyway. Yeah, so I guess, okay. The reasoning behind Wireshark is... We want it to be able. We want to be able to see if this thing connects to the internet, where it goes, what it tries to connect to, all that sort of stuff. And Wireshark will quickly and easily let us do that. Um, the reason we use Notepad Plus Plus is because it's what I use to format documents and just mess around with stuff. I don't know. I prefer it over using Visual Studio and stuff. But VS Code or any other. I don't know, text editor will do. Um, or Adam, or, well, no, Notepad, not really Adam. Notepad. Not really Notepad in this case. Um, so now what we want to do, and this will be interesting, but... So at the moment, we're connected to the internet. We needed to be to download all of this stuff um, and to download the, the zip attachment itself. Currently, I've got it set to natted, but you can use any really. And then I've got an additional, I wonder if this will show up if I go, oh, I think it's manage is the one that I was looking to. No, it's not that one. Settings. Oh, uh, the menus don't, the menus don't show up. <laughs> yeah. Um, On the, uh, if you're wondering about the random mouse movements before that just showed up. Uh, oh, no, it's showing up the, now. Yeah, go. yeah. That shows up, but the menus don't. Okay, so yeah. The setup for the VM is, I mean, I've given it 7 gig of RAM and 4 cores just because I can on this laptop because I've got them spare and Visual Studio runs like a dog otherwise. <laughs> the 60 gig hard drive that we talked about, I got a NAT adapter and what I'm going to add is another one, which I didn't pre-game, which is going to be on a custom network. So let's pick 13 because it's about as close to leet as we're going to get. <laughs> we'll leave it connected, but then once it runs and saves. Come on. Uh, it's got to Just shut the VM down and restore it so it yeah. sees the hardware. Yeah. So basically the idea here is we're going to have a internet connected adapter that we can use to download the the suspicious package and then we're going to disconnect that network adapter so that the vm is no longer connected to the internet but for wireshark to be able to listen and try and capture packets and see what this thing is trying to connect to we still yeah. need some sort of network interface and so that's why we're going to create a new one which has no internet connectivity and no connection to our host um, laptop or device as well. And that'll just make sure that, um, yeah, if this thing tries to do any lateral movement across a network or anything like that, it won't, or hopefully won't get out of our VM. Yeah, and that's, which is again, some of the sensible steps to take to minimize uh, kind of something going sideways. Yeah, uh, exactly. Some malware, though, if, and we might find this if we get further on. Uh, so, uh, 
you might want to. I don't know if you might want to like blank the screen because we'll, you'll see this. The stuff will show up. Yeah, true. All right, hang on. Uh, uh, anyway, so um, some malware, you kind of have to. So you could probably go to the level of even on your home network having like an isolated uh, kind of network segment um, if you if you can, because you might want to actually give it internet access. So. Uh, some stuff doesn't work if it can't find the internet. Uh, sometimes to get to the next step, you want to actually let it download something it's going to download. Uh, so Exactly. And that's where um, we're going to start off with giving it no network connectivity. If we get to a point where we can see it's trying to connect to something externally and it's just not continuing if it fails, that's where we might start to consider that sort of thing. And just add a bit more control to to what this yeah. thing does, because at the moment we have no idea what it could potentially be doing. Yeah, and that's the that's always the. It's funny. This is like, you know, a bit like when you hear people about climbing mountains or going to the bottom of the ocean, and they're like, "Oh yeah, it's calculated risk." That's what this is. So we yes. go, we we do enough understanding that stuff can be really bad. So we do enough to kind of. Uh, minimize any impacts um and if something goes really wrong because it wasn't unforeseen then we go well that's the cost of doing what we were doing exactly. so if you're not prepared to bear the cost of it all going sideways um which is why you wouldn't do this on your main computer with all your documents and pii and saved credit and card info. crypto wallets and everything else yeah. that you want to keep secret okay not that i actually have any of those on this host any <laughs> anyway but yeah <laughs> Um, so yeah, basically all I did was just download that attachment. Um, windows seven by default, unlike windows 10 does not come with windows defender or anything like that. You have to install that separately. So lucky for us, we've got no antivirus or anything running in the background to automatically delete or do any checks on this file or anything like that. Um, so we'll start off by opening this file in something like notepad just to see what we're dealing with. And as we sort of mentioned earlier, you can see it's a very long on one line, line of obfuscated code. So if you uh, turn on word wrap, which I will do in view blind uh, there. Word wrap. So one of the things to note with VB script uh, or a couple of things is it's not case sensitive so you see in the top left function um with the capital left lowercase u uppercase n that's fine i think powershell has the same deal yeah PowerShell's so the same one of the things done to try and defeat detection is to do this so if you can't see the proper syntax because you're expecting a particular case or if you're trying to do a naive like hash on a yeah if you're doing on like a script hashing. if you generated this with different versions of munged up case then it would have a different hash every time uh so it's a relatively naive way but sometimes surprisingly functional way i'm guessing because of the prevalence of it yeah. um way to kind of bypass some level of detection it also makes it a bit harder to read yeah. the other thing is all the colons in there uh generally are new lines so yes yeah, so um, it, it's a way of the same way that so, in other languages that you would put multiple lines of code onto a single line, um, it's basically VB yeah. scripts way of doing that. Um, so maybe if you replace all the new line, all the semicolons with new lines. I'm not sure how you do that. With, so oh, in right. Notepad plus plus, that's super easy. You change it to extended search mode, which lets you use um, carriage return new lines, and then we're just going to find every colon. Replace it yeah. with a carriage return new line. Click replace all. Wait because Wait it'll for have it to, to go do through. it because it's a fairly large file. It's and now you can see oh. what we're dealing with is something slightly. So what they've done is, so I can kind of see some similar functions from when I looked at at this, but they're all differently named. So this is obviously, I think, dynamically generated. So uh, it's the same script. But the uh, the kind the function of cases names and all that kind of thing are different. Yeah. So they're all they're all obfuscated and it's effectively 
as far as I can see, basically what this does is decode uh, kind of Unicode. Well, well, not really Unicode. They've created some algorithm. So see the the numbers are like T6, P, K3, whatever. Uh, that's some encoding scheme they've created to uh, obfuscate really what's going on. And so yeah. they decode it and then they run it. So if you scroll down... And you, you see them down here. Down. So, um, yeah. 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 These here are basically an array of variables and then there's just sort of recursive arrays filled with variables that eventually get... Um, yeah decoded back into the, plain text which we'll hopefully see in a sec so now makes it hard to yeah the debug um, not debug so reverse at the moment it's hard to read and reverse just by looking at it i mean this is much cleaner than it was as a single line but we can Although, go one better wmi exec service already shows something going on so wmi is the like windows, management windows interface. Office, yeah Windows management, so yeah. that's going to be trying to run run some local local stuff. So yeah. So what we do is we open because of this isn't a solution or a project or anything like that in Visual Studio. We just open it with no code and drag and drop our file into it. This is our formatted file. Wait for it to have a think. And now you can see on this preview bar, these are all the codes and functions and you can see here this is creating a bunch of down the bottom creating a bunch of constants to oh, variable that's right. names yeah, with yeah. all of the unicode so these are we'll get there eventually but these are unicode character numbers and basically all of these arrays up here are yeah. um just massive arrays of unicode characters that then get decoded and then turn into more script which continues to run and so on. So we'll get to that when we start debugging. So it's like peeling an onion. Exactly. Yeah. The next thing we need to do now, because, um, oh man, that's slow. Come on. <laughs> because Visual Studio doesn't have a built in, um, a built in debugger within Visual Studio itself, we have to use an external tool. So I haven't set this up yet, which is cool. So if we go to tools, external tools in windows, there is a, um, a built in debugger for, uh, VB scripts, which is what sort of, if you were writing a script in office or something like that, you would be able to like do some basic debugging and stuff like that. And it's the executable that those programs use and we're just going to include that into visual studio so they can use it as well. So we'll call this our C script debugger cause that's the name of the executable and it's located in windows system 32 C script.exe. We need to add some arguments so that when basically when what this does is it tells visual studio run this executable with these arguments and do it against this VBS. Um, the no logo is just a sort of built in thing to stop it from opening up in a, like a command terminal. The X argument is the one that we're interested in. That's the one that tells C script to use debug mode. And the item path is just to run this in the path that the VB script is in, not in the system32 directory. Actually, that's what the initial directory does. The <laughs> argument, <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's right. Oh no, this isn't item path, this is item dir. So the directory is, yeah, the directory that the VBS script is located in, but then the argument is debug the item path, which is the full path, including the file. If that makes sense. Nice. Then we use, use output window. And that basically will mean that any output that the script does to the terminal, we will get to see in our little, um, visual studio output window. So a All bit good. like in uh, the Linux world standard out. Exactly. 
Yeah, yeah. Another thing which we could possibly do, which I haven't actually tried, so we'll see what happens. Oh. Is that going to crash? What are you doing? No, I didn't do anything. So uh, there's a hotkey in Visual Studio for Control K, Control D, which does code formatting. And I thought it, it might be smart enough to know how to format the code well, so that we get the I don't, pretty indenting and all that kind of stuff. But it's I don't think enough. VB script really has any... It's like, it, it's, it's a it was more just to make night. it slightly easier to read with the indenting and whatever else. Yeah. So now that we've got everything set up, um, we do have to make sure that we're running in admin, running Visual Studio as an admin, um, because the C script tool requires admin privileges to run. And from there, we can basically just click anywhere in this little lighter gray area to add a breakpoint. And now whenever the code hits this breakpoint, it'll stop. We can look at the variables and go from there. The problem with putting a breakpoint right there is that this is not necessarily the first piece of code that's going to run. So VB script um, doesn't quite work in the same way. There's no main function or anything like that for us to so easily. If I'd you remember back to our the Python one last week, so uh, things that are defined as functions just kind of get loaded into memory as bits of code to run at some point in time. Exactly. And so there'll be a free bit of, there'll be some code somewhere in the script, not inside a function that will actually run. And it'll generally be the first bit of code, not inside a function. Yes. Um, that will, well, I mean, technically this all executes, it's all parsed, but it's the first bit outside of a function that actually starts doing things. Um, well, I'm just waiting so, to catch up. Yeah. So, <laughs> So we have to kind of just spatter some yeah, uh, so debug I'm, I'm points, gonna skip. breakpoints around. Uh, is this where all of the... Yeah, so I'm going to skip all of these array generating functions, which go all the way down to about here. You can see they all look the same in the sort of line preview. Um, but basically what you can see here, as you were saying... There's a function and an end function, but then outside of that, there is a variable being assigned a value. Yeah. And in VB script, a function with no arguments can just be called by its name. So we can see here that F8, W, Y, and B is this function here. So the code will, or yeah. the execution flow will get down to here. It'll skip over this for now. It'll get to here and go, oh, okay. I need to call this function now and sort of jump backwards into here. In, in some other languages, again, Python, favorite of mine, uh, that syntax would assign uh, the function as in the representation of the function to that variable yeah. and not, not actually run. Yes. Whereas in other languages that it'd just go, no, nah, I'm not going to do anything because that's an illegal operation. Yeah, Wait, pretty... that's illegal. So, so, so we'll do it to the last one just to sort of run through that. But yeah. because there's so many, I'm not going to debug all of them. Um, yeah. But pretty much in terms of like the code that we were talking about, the execution flow, it'll load all of these functions into memory. And because there's nothing in between them, it won't actually execute any code until it gets down to this first um oh it's skipping all over the place this first assignment that happens outside of a function so we'll skip all of those for now head back down here when it catches up and just add a couple more just in case it also when it um when it decodes this array it happens to load one of these functions as well we'll just sort of add a few also, I'll uh, I will say if you've got any questions, feel free to to shout out. Yeah, um, definitely. Shout out. What am I? I've watched too many other YouTubers who say that, so I've just said, it. feel free to like politely comment if you have a question. I'll put it like that. Yeah. So, uh, uh, just a quick another update, another difference, I guess, in VB scripts. So you've got functions and subs, and basically the difference is. A function returns a value, a sub doesn't. 
Yes. <laughs> a sub is essentially a function that doesn't return a value. Oh, what did sub stand for? Like, because it was the same in VB. Remember in like yeah. uni info, whatever it was, and I like like you dimension variables here as well. Yeah, um, that's the dim and the set. Yeah. Uh, so the dim is sort of the declare, if you like, and then the set is the actual. Uh, yeah. Declaration instantiation. Instantiation. That's it. Yeah, something like that, man. Yeah. <laughs> Uni was so long ago. Okay, so we got another big one outside of a function, which is cool. We'll just stick one on there. Hit that. Hit that. We're almost at the bottom because the rest is just junk. Well, not junk, but it's not stuff that we're going to be debugging into. So now that we're finished with all of the um, sub and function declarations, we can see that we get a list of function calls. So if we just do a quick find on this one, I say quick. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> we'll Lightning bolt fast. So fast. Visual Studio in a VM, everybody. So we can see this is the line that we were searching for and there's only one function with the same name way back up there. And so yeah, code will eventually get down here and call that function. And then the rest of this whole code is all just Unicode characters, uh, except yeah. another function, which yeah. happens to be called close TCP IP net BIOS. Ooh, which does like that not look like an interesting? And so, it's, I'm guessing it's named that for a spe specific region, reason. Consider, considering the way they've named all their other functions, there has to be a very specific yeah. reason. Um, well, I'm wondering if that actually is something they're overriding or something. I don't know. It could be. Um, but, I mean, looking at the code, you can see get object. Um, looking at that in, say, that's a built-in uh, VB function. We can look up what that means. Same with WMI. So... WMI yeah. is like a management interface of Windows that lets you execute almost SQL looking queries, um, which hopefully we'll get to see some of those as well. Anyway, so we've set a bunch of break breakpoints. Hopefully when we run this thing, it hits one of them before it does anything too malicious. Um, but before we do that, I'm gonna disconnect the VM from the internet because I almost forgot to do that. <laughs> I'm also not running Wireshark yet. So let me just, uh, I might close that so it doesn't pick up the interface that we don't want. VM manage, uh, is it manage or settings? Settings. Wait for it to load. Go to this network adapter and we can just click disconnect. And now, the blame. <laughs> No now more we can see you. we're on a network, but we have no but, internet. Access. Jacob, how are you streaming to YouTube without the internet? <gasps> how does he do it? Magic. Uh, yeah, I was going to say a a name of a subreddit that I subscribe to, but then I realized it's probably not a good thing to say. Out in public. Oh. <laughs> is, it, he, is it one of the more humorous ones? It's one of the more humorous ones along the lines of magic fuckery. Uh... <laughs> so the network adapter that we're interested in is called um, connection three. We can see that here. So the one that we're going to tell Wireshark to listen to, I mean, we could probably listen to the loopback as well, but we're more thinking that this thing's going to try and connect out to the internet or some somewhere externally. And the way it's going to do that is over one of these devices instead of the loopback address. So I'll just let that sit there. It's not doing anything because we're not doing anything, which is cool. And then we just go into our tools and we can see here now that we've got our C script debug that we created. And all we have to do is click that, wait for it to have a whinge. And that's not what we want to see because what, what it's done is run the code and not hit any breakpoints. Awesome. <laughs> Where do I need oh, to put a breakpoint for this thing to trigger? Looks like it's uh, trying to run IE though. No, no, that's the, I'll, I'll show you how I know that in a sec once I get it to break in the right spot. 
So if it so goes into there, it should hit it. It should hit it. It should hit it. This is uh, we've just moved on from security to being a normal dev. Basically, <laughs> yep. This. Welcome to the dev world. Well, actually, reversings like this one, we've done like actual reversing of you know like reversing challenges, and you you follow the code flow and so you're like i think i want to break point there and then you do it you're like damn it it's in the wrong spot well so okay let's just scroll up for a sec so i'm just looking for the very first piece of code outside of a function right we've got that yep. is all function that's all function that's all function that's all function that's all function down to all this 4h is all function that's all function that's all function that's all function that's all function that is all function. That is all function. That is it's all like function. A song. We could turn uh, this into like the new intro. That's all function, function song. That's all function. That's... <laughs> so this is the first one that we hit. If I go C script debug, why does it not debug? Oh, where'd my arguments go? Oh, I know because you're in that one. Yeah. Item do item path C script debug Apple can do. Hmm. Uh, it's no demo like a live demo. No demo like a live demo. Because uh, I copy general... pasted it, let's just make sure that that does exist. Oh, I didn't open it. Yeah, C script exists there. Eh? Yeah. Tools. Stop it. Run it again. <laughs> What's going on? Okay. So that is exactly what I did on Windows 10 and it worked. <laughs> Man, what's different about Windows 7? So C script debug should look like that with running C script no logo x item path item dir. Let's try running it from the command line and see if it's any different. This is the joy sometimes of stuff we do where uh, it's like a classic. If if any if anyone watching works in IT, there's the classic like dev thing of, oh, but it worked on my laptop. Uh, yeah. And this is a, a reason why you should have a proper dev environment is kind of for this reason. Exactly. Um, uh, I want to go into C here, investigation that. So we're basically running the exact same thing that we ran last time. I'm not going to bother with the no logo stuff because we don't really care if that runs. Um, so the X is to debug, then we want to go to oh, control V doesn't work. Right click. <laughs> <laughs> then it's called that one. Then that should be it. Nope. Yeah. So that's the right thing. Yeah. Okay. So that's running it. So we're just not hitting any breakpoints. Why is it not hitting any of the breakpoints is the annoying thing. I mean, the other alternative is you can just uh, update key parts of the script to just print out what the variable is. That'll, yes. that'll tell you stuff. Not as not nearly as effective or easy, but uh, sometimes a more ghetto way to do things. Well, so instead of all this stuff, we can do... Um... The VB, hang on, let me do it all. Oh, I don't have internet on this. Never mind. I'm not going to Google it on there. <laughs> now, especially now that it's been running a bunch of times, I'm not super confident connecting it to the internet. Um, so VBS, right to console. And we want to run wscript.echo, easy. So let's just replace this with 
Descriptor echo and then hopefully that works. It says to just do it as a string, but this will be a function, so we'll see what happens. Cool, done. Let's just see if this writes anything to the console. Let's watch the magic happen, hopefully. It's <laughs> <laughs> Is it still in my thing? Nope. No, nope. copy of that. Course not. I don't remember copying that. Anyway, uh, 442 formatted, go. Nothing. Awesome. I think we're near enough. So maybe what we'll do is we'll go figure out why it's not working. Uh, and then that's, I mean, we thought this might be a few parts potentially anyway yeah um rather than everyone having the entertainment of uh listening to us try and solve a problem that we're like why is this not working now why do um, we do it on the on the flip side uh so as you can always talk about the the amusing news that's kind of inevitably happened in the last um last week do it uh i term two so like if you have a mac and you use item two, which I used to when I had a Mac. Uh, it's like it's a critical remote code execution issue. Uh, yeah, that was a good quite one. Quite amusing. Yeah. Seeing what exactly the problem was. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Oh, oh, okay. So they haven't got a technical write up yet. Probably because it's so close to it actually happening. So quite often a vulnerability will get disclosed but no information on how it works because they're trying to give enough time for people to patch up before they um let things go wild yeah that's that 90 day disclosure period generally well even then days. once everyone's agreed like when you release a patch and say it's fixed as a critical issue so you should patch it uh yeah, true generally you, they release you still give it a bit of time before you go and by the way here's the technical detail yeah um it's seven years old, though. Wow. Um, uh, a friend of mine suggesting there might be a break on first line option in Visual Studio. Um, yeah, or we could just do right at the top of the file, put our own function, um, or put it, put something that'll run, and then put a breakpoint on it and see if that'll work. So uh, just echo something out. And then put a breakpoint on it and see if it stops. And if it doesn't, then it's obviously something different on Windows Seven as opposed to um, yeah, uh, ten. So you think there's something in here to say? Well, so uh, no, it might not exist in Visual Studio. You just suggested it might. If you go to the top line, uh, though, there probably is in here. Debug options, break on exceptions, break before deleting breakpoints. Uh, yeah, no, it's probably not. Um, just add something to the first line. Uh, break on exceptions, yeah. Break on exceptions, enable that if it's not already enabled. Uh, what was that? Break on exceptions. Well, is that... Uh, okay, that might not... Yeah. The problem is, is we're not exactly using out-of-the-box functionality, like kind of integrating it with C script. Uh, yeah. So it's... Well, yeah. it's also possible that I do need more modules than just the one that I said I installed. Um... Potentially. So let me just... All right. This is a... Don't try this at home. If you've run a script that you're not sure about, do not... Actually, I could go back to a snapshot. I might do that. Okay, never mind. This should only take a sec. We'll jump back to a snapshot before I try to run any code. And from there, I will reconnect to the internet and see how long it takes to install it'll probably take well, way too long oh it'll break the stream probably won't it why i don't know because my internet might not be that good 
Oh, downloading stuff. Yeah. Uh, um, while we're waiting, uh, Twitter also accidentally sold private questions as a part of their like user data set to oh, advertisers. Really? Yeah, we recently discovered that when you provided an email address or phone number for safety or security purposes, for example, two-factor authentication, this data may have inadvertently been used for advertising purposes, specifically in our tailored audience and partner audience's advertising system. Um, oh, and when an advertiser uploaded their marketing list, we may have matched people on Twitter to their list based on the email or phone number, the Twitter account. Okay, so they didn't actually directly leak that stuff but when i go they used it for and matching. upload a list of targets they matched on fields they shouldn't have been matching on yeah okay. um so for security purposes specifically not for other purposes uh wow that's a bit of a challenge though because advertisers can do that they can go here are leads see if you can find them in the sets of data that you you're allowing us to match on and then they did it on stuff they shouldn't have luckily i i mean it's probably semi-problematic but my mobile number is not registered with twitter no i think it's mine um so yeah there's um the window that i've got in my write-up like the the sort of screenshot thing there's a thing called the the Visual Studio just-in-time debugger, which isn't prompting for, like the prompt isn't coming up that I was expecting it to. And now I just got to try and figure out, it could be actually straight up in here. Come on. Oh, the joys of working in a VM and a live environment. Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Let's this do is it. taking longer than expected. Yeah, no no shit, Sherlock. No shit. <laughs> Alright, uh, let's just quickly look at this and individual components. Probably doesn't help that I'm trying to do two things at once. Uh, is the just in time. Aha. Just in time debugging is a separate thing. I don't know which, I guess, package of components that comes under because I had a bunch of them ticked the first time around. When I did this in Windows 10, I almost ticked all of them because I was an idiot. Um, so I thought for the live stream, I'll just do the one that I thought was the only one we needed. And it turns out it was not the only one we needed. I probably need to kill this for it to do anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you covered. So, yeah, we might also need this just-in-time debugger. There's probably potentially another one that we need, but hopefully that's enough. We'll see what happens. I completely forgot about that. How's everything going? How's your week while we're waiting? Yeah, not too bad. It's funny, we seem to be doing the intro stuff at the end. Yeah, uh, yeah, you know, just another week, just working, working the hard or hardly working. I don't know. Bit of you know that old thinking. joke, beaten yeah. hard or hardly beaten. Um, yeah, that old thing. Just doing bits and pieces, playing some guitar. Nice. So you love in a how-to video? Is this like so? Yeah, no, just learning to play guitar. While, while no, we're, while I, I already can play guitar, but Visual Studio to do its thing. This is. This is us that are, well, this week, so there was a conference called ACER this week, so the Australian Information Security Association Conference. Uh, so the, Jake This is our that. excuse for being so organised yeah. this week. Jake was at that. I went to the dinner thing they had on Tuesday night, which is why we didn't stream on Tuesday. Uh, and then, because uh, it was Jake's weeks to stream, I could have gone, you know what, I'll do it this week, and I can prep, you know, last night. Uh, but I was like, no, nah, it's your week, Jake. So, Jake, <laughs> and the, when did, you Deal got back last it. night, right? So, so you got I back had a couple of hours this afternoon to prep the VM, and I pretty much spent my entire time prepping the VM rather than actually testing that this thing worked. So Yeah. 
That's why it's running so smoothly. <laughs> Welcome to our world. Uh, that's fine. Um, oh, finishing up. Just finishing just, up. Just just finishing up. You know, shouldn't take that uh, long. We're both at a hundred percent. So, bit of what's Microsoft that meme? time here. Like the cars meme. I am speed. I am speed. A bit of the old um, Microsoft time going on here. <sighs> oh, there we go. Sweet. Sick. Let's do it. Let's see if that's all we needed. And if it wasn't, we might have to f do a follow-up in part two where I get it working and then figure out what, what I was missing. Probably something really dumb. File. It's not a project. It's a... Okay, fine. Normally there's a recent files as well. Uh, but that might be an enterprise thing. Uh, where did I put it? Here. Here. I'm faster than the windows. Come on. Oh, shit. No. Right. Yeah. You, I uh, went back on a... Um, you snapshotted, so... Snapshot. So, let me just... That's the wrong one. Let me just go back here for a sec. Everyone look at our pretty thumbnail for a minute while I download this file again. Uh. Oh, also Windows decided to install some new updates. Wasn't that nice of it? Oh, I gotta love updates. Updates. Especially to a, <laughs> a VM that really doesn't need the update. Sorry, just logging in here. Nice, slow VM. Go, 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 go. Log in. Go, 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 go. I should have taken a snapshot with it downloaded already. Anyway. Maybe I'll do that now. Uh, uh, I get to watch Jacob logging in now, everyone. Uh, and hopefully we get there. We'll get there. We always get there. This is always that bit where it's kind of like awkward because it's, oh, what do we talk about? What do we talk uh, about so while we try and figure out any why of the, we fucked up? If any of the, what's that? Does that say three million people watching now? Three million? No, I'm pretending three million people are watching. It's just three. Three viewers just, and two likes. Thanks so to I'm those... One, Thanks to I'm all those of, people who have liked us. If you haven't already, what? subscribe and do all of that shit hit, that all the YouTubers tell you to do. Hit do that, that to like us. button. Punch it in the face. It was that Irish guy who Just does that. Punch it uh, in the face. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, and I'm one of those three people, by the way. So oh, I can turn this into like three likes. Ooh. Yeah. Um, cool. All right. Uh, Oops, that's uh, almost there. That. Oh, yeah, right, hang on. Uh, let me just swap back be to, to what I'm doing take off because... Your quality splash screen. There we go. How good is paint? So good. We are just the best at paint. Uh, this right. is, so we're, we're just going to quickly run through and do late. the exact same thing again. We're definitely in the more late back part of the stream. So Yeah. Uh, we'll put same. on your comfort sweatpants, everyone. Find RN, replace all, save, once it catches up. Nice. So that's the one that we're dealing with. Let me just kill all internet. <sighs> so that we don't accidentally crypto lock up everything. I don't think that's what this, <laughs> this particular one does, but you never know. Yeah. Adapter, go. I think it had like a malware, particular malware thing that I've never, I never bothered to actually look at in uh, Works ATP. Yeah. Um, that's probably an idea for understanding what we're in for. But you know what? Just like, why not explore? Uh, you know, if you're gonna walk into a cave or go up a mountain, why not not know what you're getting yourself into? Well, that's it. And when I when I was doing this for work, yeah, I got to the point where it was um, like I did basically exactly this in Windows 10, and it was downloading 
or it was trying to download a couple of binaries in a DLL and then after that it was throwing an exception. Um, and so that's as far as I got in Windows 10. It wasn't throwing an exception because it didn't have those files. It was throwing an exception running one of the WMI queries, which made me think it was a different version of Windows that I needed to, to run or do this debugging on. Uh, but anyway. And there's plenty of Windows 7 still around, plenty of corporate still use it. Exactly. Uh, I think, though, support, official support runs out soon. It does, yeah, 2020, isn't it? Sometime oh, next year. Man, I remember when Windows 7 was new, but Windows 7 is probably j just as old or older than XP was when Windows 7 came out. Yeah. What, 2008, 2009? That's when I started using the beta anyway. Oh, there was Vista in there, that piece of fun. Vista, I, I just... remember Vista being massive in high school, yeah. All right, so now instead of breakpointing every function, I'm just going to breakpoint these ones and see if I need to set that up as well. Let me go back to this awesome place that I was before to copy paste all of the things from. Good job in getting back to where we were at in the first place. So it was called that. Its location was oh, not that. Oh, definitely not that. C script. That doesn't matter. That can be called anything. <laughs> yes. That's just a pretty name that appears in the, the menu. So we don't actually care what that says. All right, and we'll do that. Okay, now let's go tools, C script. This is the this is the thing that I was expecting to see before. Ooh, there we go. So when you get this just in time debugger, <laughs> make sure you pick the one that has our script name in it, not the other one. And now it should hit one of these breakpoints. Yeah, so you now hit a break I was point. thinking about it. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So we hit our very first piece of code. From here, we can push uh, F11 is step into, should be that one. F10 is step over and shift F11 is step out of. So because we don't want to skip this function, we want to see what this function does. We're going to hit F11 to step into. And you can see that execution flow goes from down here up to here. And now if we F11 over this, we can go into our variables and looking at our local variable, we can see that this func this um, variable is an array with a bunch of numbers in it. And these numbers are Unicode characters. We'll keep stepping through. I'll probably just step over all of these now. Uh, so you know from what? memory, I'm just gonna... the, the step into, step over, step out of are... Uh, like, so step into is step into and run through a function that you may have hit as a part of a breakpoint. Yes. Step over is, I think, literally just jump to the next breakpoint, is it? Or... No, step over will um, skip to the next line. So you can see here, ah, okay. currently yeah. my code execution is here. If I press step into, it'll go into this function. If I do step over, it will still okay. execute this function, but it'll go to the next line, which and will step be out down of... here. And step out of just runs through and your then step code out of will just yeah and you can yeah, push f5 which is continue and that will jump me to the next breakpoint so if i push f5 now we should jump all the way down to here yeah and then if we, we look through locals and now we'll if we look at all the locals we should see a bunch of arrays of characters which is all of those things. And then this one down the bottom, which looks like it is a multi-dimensional array made up of all of those arrays. All good so far? Yep. Cool. That all makes sense. Awesome. And then we've got the me's and the whatnot, which is, I think the me is the current thing you're in. But I... Yes. So yeah. what we'll do now is we'll step into this function because we want to see what this function does. And so our locals have changed because that's our scoping. So we're no longer in, I guess, the main function. We're only looking at variables in this function. And that's why our locals is now empty. Um, we can see 
now is probably a built-in for the current date and time, which it is. Looking at this, we're going to create an object based off a bunch of arrays with a dot username. <laughs> so yeah, chances are this is going to output something to do with my current user's username, which it is. Um, this is an IE user VM. That's the default user for this VM. <laughs> now we're creating a message box with a bunch of stuff in it. Now, what I can do is F11 into this and we can go in and see what this, so you can see this function is taking an argument of an array of items. So if we F11 in, we should hit one of these functions and we do, we get a function with a parameter pass through. And what do we got going on here? We've got a variable equals zero, variable equals empty string, variable equals empty string plus. So char w or chrw is, uh, is a, convert. that's an actual, yeah. That's BBS the, function. yeah, convert to characters. And I think the W is for the Unicode. And so it's basically taking or oh, calling another function and taking 143, I guess, as another way of obfuscating the Unicode character numbers. So it must have just added 143 to all of those numbers or something like that. Uh, should we F11 into this one or F10? Uh, dealer's choice, mate. Let's just skip over that one because we only want to know what it says. We get the character U. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <laughs> ah, but we can see, so it is concatenating strings. So this is creating yeah. one character at a time, building up a string. So I'm glad I didn't. Um, oh, shit. Okay, I f 10 a little too many times there. It said user. That was all it said. So it said user. What we'll do is I'll just dump a breakpoint here and skip over it all again. So it said user. <laughs> then it says an it unexpected says... error has occurred. But this is a string. Okay. Yes. Now what we're doing is it's got the word MS word. And if yep. we run that again. So the place that this function was called, remember it was within a message box function. So what this has just done is create a message box and out of all of that obfuscation and arrays and all of that shit, it built this string basically to pretend to be MS word and prompt an error saying that the IE user has an unexpected error. Ah. Uh. I, I hadn't read that properly last time, and I just assumed yeah. it was a legit try doing something with IE. No. But... So that's why okay. when I was trying to run it before and this popped up straight away, that's how I knew it's not debugging properly because yeah. it's all part of the the malware, I guess. So yeah. while this so this pops up, the user goes, oh, damn, it must have been like a, a Word document or something, I guess. Clicks OK. Yeah, so this is the code that we just ran build a message box from that function plus all of this other stuff. And yep. it was basically a faked error message. So from an attack perspective, if this previews in Outlook, for example, what's going to happen is you will go to open the email preview. You'll just see an a MS, what, what looks like an MS word error, except MS word doesn't quite error out like that. But, no. um, to an unsuspecting right. non-technical person, it's believable. And then you hit OK, which I'm guessing it's going to, that's the start of the pretext. Yeah. So I guess in the meantime, because we had breakpoints, it's slightly different, but without the breakpoints, it would potentially be continuing to run in the background or waiting for the user prompt so that it can go and do something. I've kept it connected to the internet, but who cares? Um, that's just going to be a lot more messy. Like there's already a heap of shit in there. Oh, well. we, we might not analyze any of the traffic tonight anyway. We're already over time, but that's fine. Do another quick quick run through. We've got, so now we've got two, two variables with time in them and we're doing a date diff. I'm not sure. So it looks like it's only going to run this code if our two dates are less than two. 
um, I'd have to Google what the date diff um, output values are. BBS. It might be less than two hours, days. Anything oh. over two might be a like fail. Wait yeah, a here second. We go. This okay. might be in Unicode, yeah. So this might be to catch if it's running in a debugger with breakpoints because it might be fast enough. I don't know. Although the first one was set before the pop-up came up. So uh, no, maybe not. Date diff is to do with... It's the number of intervals between the two dates. So um, if we look at, I'm just going to F11 into this because it all has to do with the type that you're putting in. So um, the first argument here is the date format. So if we're talking in number of years in the format, it'll do like the number of years difference. But if this is in minutes or seconds, it'll output the number uh, of seconds different. So I assume if this goes seconds, it'll be if that message box displayed in under two seconds, then run this code, which yeah, like you said, could be a ghetto way of blocking a or detecting a debugger because obviously us sitting here right now or in this message box function it took us more than two seconds or two minutes even to sort of step through that code and figure out what it was doing so i wouldn't be surprised if this fails and just go doesn't call this code uh so just doing a quick run through again i'll just f5 straight to the end we've got s so that's yeah it's looking at seconds and because we took more than two seconds to look at this message box, it's quitting. Which, um, okay, so it just exits. So that's well, it doesn't necessarily exit. It exits its function. Uh, exits the function. I was going to say, if it exited the whole script, that's that. Their users do not have gun reflexes, which yeah. is probably it's a ghetto kind of might indicate something's going on. Yeah. Well, exactly. But we kind of want it to fire and do this. So let's see. Oh, man, if this works. No. Oh, it is smart enough. Okay. <laughs> let's just skip out and say, come on. I hit enter. Uh, might not be smart enough. Can I put it down here? No. Damn it. It's not smart enough to let me do uh, modifying it's while... In theory, code. just as that executes, just as you hit the breakpoint for it, you can change those values. True. Um, so it may, might just be for something else. Um, Let's see anyway. if we can see what this does. We might be able to just figure out what it does. Uh, well, yeah, we're not figuring out what that does. Um... Uh, that's six. Yeah. Okay. So while 143 is less than that number, if it equals that number, then quit. Otherwise, if it equals a slightly smaller number, add a bunch of numbers to this number and then call itself again. Uh. who knows what the <gasps> hell that's doing but that could just be a kill time process like it could just be a do this to kill time because of that uh, date time wherever we were I don't even know where code execution is anymore there uh Seconds. Uh, right. Again, same same friend record said if we run it again, you could just change that two to be way bigger. Um, oh yeah, I mean we could stop we could stop debugging and run it again until we hit that. That's fine. Um, yeah, I mean it hasn't done anything too far. Oh, I didn't mean to click that. Let's kill it. Let's head up to that breakpoint we just created. Come on, is he watching the stream and not? Not He's, chatting. 
He's on. He's on the odd hangouts. Hey, Grub. Grub rocked up though. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> that was probably hours ago, and I haven't had it open. <laughs> uh, where was that breakpoint that we just put in? Uh, <laughs> um, to the to friend of mine's just asked, uh, was it? Oh, so um, you you can change. So you can change values in the locals. Pretty yeah. sure in Visual Studio oh, it's running. Normally you can you run have that to, as well. You have to, I think you have to change code when you um. Oh, well, did you in, just in like the .NET C Sharp world? You can change code during execution. Uh, when it's at a when it's broken and it'll keep going, like you can. Maybe. So what I was trying to do was modify the code so it just ran either way. But anyway, it's so maybe, it's obviously maybe not, smart not with C script because it's yeah. kind of passing it out to. C yeah, it's not, it's not smart enough in the C script. But that's cool. We'll just F five through until it hits here again, and I've just set it to always call this no matter what. Basically, I don't really need that one anymore. We're going to F5 through this. Okay, so now, that's before it hits that, let's put another one there and F5 through it and click OK really quick. So now, we're in less than two seconds, so this should go through anyway. And now we're going to get to see what this amazing function of numbers does. <laughs> uh, okay, so we got 143, all good. Oh good, it's less than that, we know that. It's not equal to that, we knew that. It's not equal to that, we knew that. It's not equal to that, we knew that. So then it added one, so now we're up to 144, and it is literally just gonna keep looping through, isn't it? Until oh, wow, yeah. And, yeah, so until 143 <laughs> equals these numbers, but then when it equals, I'm just gonna put breakpoints here, here, and here, and F5. So it'll eventually keep adding this number up, taking a bunch of time. And now, what's that variable, IW? So it's just adding 144 to that number. Or plus one, plus 100, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. And then it just keeps going. Really? So if you take less than two, yeah, this probably isn't doing anything. So if you take less than two seconds, it just kills a bunch of time on its own. I, Which is that maybe, what it's doing? It's, yeah, maybe it's, like it's a fail trying safe to get for... through. I don't know if you're, if you're automating or if there's something that... Um, it's trying to do something that, I don't know. Yeah. Um, but it, that would indicate that it's under some sort of analysis or someone knows what they're doing. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. So basically, we what we've ended up with is this first function creates a message box. That's that entire function. The next function in the list, I mean, should we keep going or? Yeah, why not? We'll keep going for a little bit and see what happens. So... The next function we've got we'll stop at 930. Um, is creating a file system object somewhere that we don't know yet. Let's F11 into this and try and figure out where it's going to create a file. We've got a do while, so... We know it's probably doing some it's more. It's just going to loop through a bunch, so I'll skip over that loop. We get the number one, which is fine. So that'll be the first argument. Nope, it's getting sent to this, it equals one, so we should hit this first one. So it'd be interesting to know the difference between those two variables, which, can we see those anywhere? V2 and F8. Oops, V, T, U, V. So no. many variables. Oh, V2 is like a, it's a constant. So it'll be down here. Oh, it's used in a lot of places. Never mind. We don't care that much. Anyway, so it's going to convert that value to an int via this function, 
What does that function do? We've been here before. It, let me just close that. It creates the number two, awesome. Okay, so because this equaled one, we made it equal two. And now we are gonna create something again. Get special folder two. So that's obviously a built-in VB script. Get special folder. And I'm just Googling this on another screen. Get special folder obtains the full path to any of the special windows folders, desktop, start menu, etc. Uh, so it's basically another way of grabbing system directories. And number two looks like it could be user programs. Depends if it's a zero or zero based array or not. We'll find out. Oh, it's temp. Okay, cool. So cool. basically you can use this with the number two to get the path to app data local temp. Now what we're doing is converting that to a string plus B PZ, which we don't know. That's another function, which is this again. So now we're going to decode a double slash. That's fine. So this function looks like it's the decoder function. Yeah. yeah. Here we go. So now we're yeah now we're now we're decoding what to do, either what to put in this file or what this file name should be. It looks like it's more sort of contents of the file. So um, yeah, so we can see it's running a WMI function for select star from Win32 computer system. I don't know if these are results or if these are more. Oh, I yeah, yeah. So I think these are the results of get all of this stuff. Yeah. Um, so that's gonna that's like a list of binaries. I think maybe in the Windows like the System32 folder or something. Yeah. The one and two, or so the the early ones that were just numbers might be um special folders or something i don't you, you know when you can go up a folder yeah um i don't know where did we call this from because i want to delete this um breakpoint but i don't want to f5 it in case we uh i don't know yeah i don't know either anyway i'll just uh i'll just f5 it and see what happens so basically it's just dumped a massive list of all of our uh Oh, and then it calls our wait forever function again. Well, not forever, wait a while. The wait a while function, let's call it that. And it calls it again. And it calls it again. This might be to add some space between activities to uh, avoid detection. It so, could be, yeah, or to span itself out through the event logs and things like that. Yeah, make it harder to find. Um, where are we code-wise? We're still in here. All right. Uh, let's call it again. How many times do you want to call this thing? <laughs> there we go, F10. Oh yeah, it does, it just calls it a bunch of times. Okay, awesome. <laughs> so yeah, it's just like adding a bunch of padding to it. Oh, we've skipped a couple. Okay, awesome. Anyway, we skipped a couple. <laughs> We can go and have a look if I go, uh, is it temp? Yeah. Has it created any files or anything that we might find interesting? 
don't know if these are anything. Probably oh, they're going to be. Yeah. Yeah, they're the Wireshark. Um, yeah, they might be all Wireshark related stuff. So it doesn't look like it's creating anything in temp. Well, it, not yet. it doesn't have not anything yet created anyway. yet. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's just doing that again. Let's skip over that. So it's running it again. So then, yeah, that's sort of executing that query, I guess. Select star from video controller. Uh, yeah. That's probably webcam related stuff. Or either that or it's just trying to see what's on the computer. I don't it's know. Maybe basically it basically looks some... like it's just trying to enumerate the box and get as much as it can about the box. Yeah. I did a wait again. <sighs> Lots of waiting. And it's about to do another one. So it looks like every time it calls this, it does a bunch of waiting which is every time it executes a query, it does a bunch of waiting afterwards. Yeah. Cool. Now we get into a function which calls a bunch more functions. This one doesn't seem to do a lot. Oh, is this the decode one again? I think yeah, maybe. going back into, yeah, to slash that. So that should be temp slash YSY. Is that a file name? Yeah, there we go. Yeah, that was the one you had a look at earlier. So it was looking in temp slash YSY, which has that text in it. Let me just go into a new file in case we need that for later. Then... Um, okay, so if that file exists, quit. Otherwise, it creates a text file. Yeah, okay. So because that file still existed, it killed itself. But I don't know what the, was the point of this file. Maybe it's, um, oh, but this is the, that wouldn't have already run because we ended before it, unless it creates that fairly early on. Yeah. Um, and so it's, if you're trying to run it again a second time, it, it goes, oh, now I've already infected this computer. Potentially. Um, yeah. Oh, well, maybe next time we can run through this can... in a bit more detail. Or Indeed. we'll continue with some Python stuff or do something else. Anyway, hopefully this helps teach you something about reversing files. I don't think we got to the point where... Um, Even if it's the mistakes not to make. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, yeah. It does, that doesn't help. Wireshark crashed. I was still connected to the internet, so that was always fun. <laughs> Debug Wireshark. No, yeah, that's fine. Um, it doesn't look like it down well it didn't download those dlls or anything at least into temp so it must be downloading them somewhere else unless we hadn't got to the bit where it downloaded them yet i don't think we did no i yeah. think it crashed because it found that file um but that's okay we will maybe play around and not script it out but at least practice it a bit more maybe so that next time runs a bit smoother anyway thanks for watching Cheers, guys. We'll see you next week. Indeedy. Bye.